we have been discussing electromagnetic waves and in the previous lecture I argued electromagnetic waves. In the previous lecture I argued on the basis of Faraday's law which says del cross E is equal to minus partial derivative of B with respect to time and displacement current in free space that it is possible to sustain electromagnetic field when they change and gen keep generating each other and it propagates. So, we use this was Faraday's law and this was based on displacement current. In this lecture, I want to use them the way Maxwell has written it and using those Maxwell's equations, we want to derive a wave equation and then discuss it further. So, we are going to be mathematically a little more rigorous than the arguments that we gave in the previous lecture, but I want you to appreciate what we did in the previous lecture. It gave you a physical feel of what electric and magnetic fields may look like and how they change with each other. In this lecture, we are going to see the same treatment in a more sophisticated mathematical manner. So, to start with, let us write all the Maxwell's equations once more. And I am writing them in free space, free space and there is no charge, no charge density. So, the equations I have is divergence of E is 0, curl of E is equal to partial derivative of B with respect to T, partial derivative of B since there is no real current, we have mu 0, epsilon 0, the displacement current and divergence of B is 0. Let us look at the two curl equations and take the curl of this equation, the Faraday's law equation once more. This becomes equal to minus d by d t of curl of B. I have taken curl on both sides. This however, is gradient of divergence of E minus Laplacian of E, this is equal to minus d by d t and curl of B from curl of B equation is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 d E d t. From the first equation Gauss's law, this term is 0 and therefore, I get del square E is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 d 2 e over d t square. In particular, if the variation of e is only in one direction, let us say x direction, then I have partial e by partial x square is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 d 2 e by d t square. When I am writing this e, that means each component satisfies this equation. Let us write this explicitly. I have d 2 e x d x square is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 d 2 e x by d t square. We will see this equation actually is redundant because there is going to be no x component then d 2 of e y partial x square is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 partial e y over partial t square and finally, partial of E z partial x square is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 partial E z over partial t square. Notice that this is exactly like the wave equation with this quantity here being 1 over c square, right. So, with that this becomes equal to d 2 f by d x square is equal to 1 over c square d 2 f over d t square. So, we immediately see that the speed of these propagation or the electromagnetic wave is going to be 1 over square root of epsilon 0 mu 0 and E propagates like a wave. We can do the same thing for B equation 
and what we get in the B equation is you start with curl of B is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 d e d t and take curl on both sides we get curl of curl of B is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 d by d t of curl of E. This is gradient of divergence of B which is 0 minus Laplacian of B is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 d by d t of minus d b d t. That again gives me del square b is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 d 2 b over d t square which is the equation for b feet. So, a and b propagate like a wave. What we are going to do now is focus on a particular solution of this harmonic plane waves in which E vector is going to be given as some amplitude E 0 sin of 2 pi over lambda x minus 2 pi nu t which I can write as E 0 sin of k x minus omega t, where k is 2 pi over lambda and omega is 2 pi nu. Similarly, I am going to write b as some b 0 sin of k x minus omega t. So, I have e is equal to e 0 sin of k x minus omega t and b equals b 0 sin of k x minus omega t. Let us see what equations tell us about these amplitudes and the fields if they exist like this. So, let us look at equation divergence of b is 0 and divergence of e is 0. If we do that let us look at this equation divergence of E is equal to 0. I am going to have I d by d x dot E 0 sin k x minus omega t is equal to 0. Notice that all the other components d by d y and d by d z they vanish because we have taken E naught to be same all over y and z. So, this gives you I x unit vector dot E 0 is equal to 0. This means E 0 is in the y z plane. What it means is I have this wave propagating in the x direction, then E can have components let me make since I am writing E with green let me make E can have components y and z. So, let us write this E y and E z and nothing else because e dot i is 0 this is y this is z. Similarly, if I look at divergence of b is equal to 0 I get i dot b 0 is equal to 0. This also means that b has components b y and b z only. So, I have b y and b z. So, both E and B are perpendicular to the direction of propagation as we had indeed argued earlier. Let us now look at the relationship between E and B using other Maxwell's equations. So, we have now seen that E is E in the y z plane 0 sin of k x minus omega t and b is b 0 sin of k x minus omega t and we want to see the relationship between b 0 and e 0. 
just one point you may be wondering why I have kept sin k x minus omega t for both the same variation for both electric and magnetic field. If I did not do so you will see later that these terms will not cancel on two sides and therefore, their dependence on k x minus omega t has to be exactly the same. Now, let us look at the equation curl of E is equal to minus the partial derivative of B with respect to time. If I calculate curl of E, this is equal to I j k d by d x d by d y d by d z x component of electric field is 0, the y component is going to be E y 0 sin of k x minus omega t and the z component is going to be E z 0 sin of k x minus omega t. And if I calculate the curl, it comes out to be i component times 0 plus j component times 0 minus d by d x of E z 0 sin of k x minus omega t plus k component d by d x of E y 0 sin of k x minus omega t minus 0. So, this comes out to be minus j E z 0 k cosine of k x minus omega t plus k unit vector E y 0 k cosine of k x minus omega t. I want to remind you that this k is 2 pi over lambda and omega is 2 pi times the frequency nu. This can be further written as k cosine k x minus omega t minus j E z 0 plus k unit vector E y 0, which I can write as k cosine of k x minus omega t i cross E y 0 j plus E z 0 k. This last term here is nothing but E vector 0. So, what we have obtained go to the next slide that curl of E is nothing but k cosine of k x minus omega t i cross E 0 vector. Similarly, minus d b by d t is going to be equal to b 0 vector d by d t of sin k x minus omega t with a minus sign in front and this is going to become then plus omega b 0 vector cosine of k x minus omega t. Notice that uh, earlier I had said if the space time dependence that means k x minus omega t was different then I could not have equated the space and time dependence of the two expressions. More explicitly, if I write equate curl of E is equal to minus d b d t, I get k cosine of k x minus omega t i cross E 0 is equal to omega b 0 vector cosine of k x minus omega t. If this dependence which is given by cosine was not the same on both sides, although it could have the, the equation could have been satisfied once in a while, but it will go out of phase for other times. So, this dependence has to be the same. The net result is that we get B 0 vector is equal to I cross E 0 times k over omega. k over omega is nothing but 1 over c i cross E 0. 
this you can easily see from definition of k being 2 pi by lambda and omega being 2 pi nu. So, what we have now is that if the wave is propagating in the i direction, if E vector has components like this, the B vector has to be I cross E, it has to be perpendicular to it. So, if E vector is like this, let me make it a little thick, then B vector has to be perpendicular to this in the same plane. So, it has to be either this way or this way. I cross E gives me that. Now, which way would it go? For that, what we can do is we can multiply take E cross B again, which will be equal to 1 over C E 0 cross I cross E 0, and that gives me 1 over C I. E 0 square minus 1 over C I dot E 0 E 0. So, this term is 0 because I the propagation direction is perpendicular to E 0. So, what we see is that E cross B should be I E cross B should be in the direction of propagation. So, B has to be such that I would choose this particular B so that B cross C gives me I. So, what we see is propagation direction and amplitude electric field are perpendicular, propagation direction magnetic field are perpendicular, then E cross B is has the same direction as direction of propagation. So, if this is the direction of propagation x and if E happens to be in the y direction, then B would be in the z direction. On the other hand, if the wave was propagating the other way, it was going to the negative x axis, if the wave was propagating this way, then if E y E was in the y direction, B would be in the negative z direction. This is what we get from the Maxwell's equations. And finally, we saw that B 0 is equal to 1 over C I cross E 0, which means that magnitude of B is equal to magnitude of E over C, it's smaller from E by the factor of speed of light, which is 3 times 10 raise to 8 meters per second. So, magnetic field in an electromagnetic wave is much smaller than the electric field when they are measured in SI units.